Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton Show. You're watching on YouTube and as always, your comments are very much appreciated. Please leave them below. Well, after a challenging run of fixtures, the Toffees got back on track on Wednesday night with a comfortable 3-0 victory against Sunderland in the Carabao Cup. Alongside me are Graeme Stewart and Graeme Sharp. Sharpie, comfortable is just about the right word. Yeah, it was, Dan. It was uh, good to see the boys scoring goals. Uh, seemed to enjoy themselves. Obviously, I've had a poor run of form. We needed to bounce back quickly. And, you know, some people may have looked at that and thought, well, this could be a banana skin. But the lads were, were professional enough and deservedly got the result in the end. A host of changes, Graham, from the side that started the previous Premier League game, which is the norm in this competition. And the game was a bit of a slow burner. It was to start off with. The first half was, you know, took a while to get going. Uh, the crowd were quite quiet as well and understandably so because we've all been a little bit pessimistic about our form of late but you know once Dominic gets the first goal you know things look up you can see a little bit more confidence in the side and we got to half time came out second half and all guns blazing really it was a totally different performance once we got the second goal played with a lot of confidence and deservedly very comfortably went through the game ended up 3-0. It was a good win and it was a win that we desperately needed. Let's get some reflection on that game against Sunderland with Dominic Calvert-Lewin and also the boss. Yes, I think overall uh, it was a good game. Uh, three goals, maybe we had some other good chances to score even more goals and uh, we fight for a good result and uh, I'm happy about uh, the performance of tonight. Fantastic performance from Dominic Calvert-Lewin as well. Two exceptionally good finishes, weren't they? Yeah, he did well. He, uh, he's strong, he's fast. And uh, I think the, the first goal was really important in the game. We are by far the, the better team, but uh, you need to make uh, the difference in, in scoring. And in the, he scored a good goal in, in the first important one. And the second was a great goal. Uh, good movement and a good finish with his left. And uh, that, okay, that killed uh, the game at that time. Yeah, obviously over the moon um, to win the game as well and, and to, to get two goals. Um, delighted personally with my performance and obviously the team is a lot better from us and we uh, we knew going into the game we had to put in a better performance and I think we did tonight. Oh, well, that's what I'm there to do as a striker, score goals and uh, I think during the game we needed that, that extra goal and that's what we were looking for and I'm glad that I could come up with the goods and, and get it for the team. and. Um, Obviously, nice that Umar could come on and score as well. Everybody know uh, we are a difficult moment. Uh, okay, and, and and scoring goals, winning games, that's the best medicine uh, to get uh, our our full confidence back. And uh, let's hope that the result of tonight, the way how we played, that it gives uh, a boost uh, for for coming Saturday. Diamond, I would suggest that Dominic Calvert-Lewin has been the real success story of the season so far. I think so, yeah. I don't think many people would disagree with you. Um, he's been a breath of fresh air. He's got good pace about him. He's got good presence, decent in the air. And he's, he's, he's the one player we've got up top at the moment who can stretch sides. You know, we've got some good players, but they they like to come to feet more. Dominic can go beyond. And I think that's that's been the visible difference. And certainly he's added goals to that as well. And as a striker, you're always going to be measured against uh, how many goals you score. As a fully paid up member of the Centre Forwards Union, Sharpie, have you enjoyed watching Dominic? Yeah, I've said before, Dan, that it'll, it'll take him time, but he's slowly but surely adjusting to it and, and life in, uh, at the top level. Uh, OK, the, the Carabao Cup, but you still got to score goals. That's what you're paid to do. And I think he's, his overall performance is good. Obviously, the goals are a bonus for him. And as, as Graham said as well, that's what you're judged on. But I think we've, we've said before, give him time. You know, don't heap all the pressure on him. Give him time. He started the season well and, and hopefully there's more to come. They were good goals, weren't they? Very good goals. The first one was a good finish uh, and the second one was a great move. Good little ball from Sandro and a fantastic finish, left foot. So he did everything in his locker, right foot, left foot, decent in the air. Unfortunately, he could have got his hat trick with a great head against the post. So, you know, a very, really, really good performance from Dominic. That would have been the best of the lot, wouldn't it? The diving header. That would have been as well. And you don't see many these days as well, do you? A terrific ball in the box, great header, very unfortunate. It can then back off the post. Well, another plus point to emerge from that victory against Sunderland was an assured first start for John Joe Kenny. We caught up with the Kirkdale-born defender after the game. You know, you've got to wait for your chance, and tonight my chance come, and you know, it's what you're waiting for, it's what you work hard for, and you know, the rewards do come in the end. And you got a great ovation from the fans before the game as well. Did you really sense that they wanted you to do well tonight? Yeah, um, you know, when I got the ovation, you know, give me goosebumps, yeah, but, you know, I know they're always behind me because, you know, I'm from Liverpool myself, and... They're all there for me, so it was great to uh, get your reception. On yourself, you've obviously been schooled through Everton. You've gone out, had your loans, you've done well with England's under-20s. Do you think that's all prepared you to come and play for Everton's first team now? 
Yeah, um, you know, I'm not saying I'm the full maiden and everything, but you know, I'm getting there and I want to keep on working hard and listen to the coach. And you know, I'm at a great club and I'm working with top players now. And you know, I've got to keep on learning and learning. You know, hopefully get better in my game and I say I'm hopefully improving games and get get winning ways again. Something else the manager mentioned was your link up with Nikola Vlasic. He thought that really kind of grew in the second half and you were a real attacking force. Did you feel that yourself? Yeah, I think Nico was very good today as well, strong on the ball. And, you know, we had, uh, you know, I don't think you can understand what I was saying, but we had a good, um, good um, thinking together and we done well, yeah. You've drawn Chelsea away in the next round. What do you make of that? Another team, another game to play, and you know we don't. It's whatever. We don't really. We shouldn't be fearing no one. We're a top team, and you know when the game comes, we'll we'll, we'll, be, we'll work towards it and hopefully get the win again and get through. Yeah. Well, I would suggest that Nikola Vlasic will learn Scouse a lot quicker <laughs> than John Joe Kenny will master Croatian. But let's start with John Joe. I thought he was terrific. He was. You know, he grew into the game. You know, I think he, when you saw him at first, listen, he's an old-fashioned right back. He defends first and foremost, but. When he can get forward, he had so much of the attacking uh, options that the team have got. Uh, had a good understanding with Vlasic, you know, and I think when, as a forward as well, when, when you see the ball going to John Joe, automatically you know he's going to get his head up and try and play that early ball to you. So I thought he grew into the game and we saw more of him in the second half as an attacking force, but you know, he can be really pleased. It was a fantastic start for him. Got a terrific reception off the fans before the game when his name was read out, Graham. Yeah, they did. I mean, they've been looking forward to watching him. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about what John Joe's done in the under-23s. We've seen him on numerous occasions and he's starred for them. It's totally different when he come into the first team and to do that on a consistent basis is what John Joe's got to look to do. But, I'm, you know, I'm with Sharpie. Second half was a lot more of the John Joe that we're used to seeing at under-23 level. What have you made of Nikola Vlasic? Yeah, he looks really good. I mean, to be totally honest with you, You've, you'd have had to be desperately poor not to look good against Sunderland, if, if the truth be known. But that said, you can only you know, play against who you're up against. And, and he did very, very well, looked neat and tidy on the ball, looked positive. That's what I enjoyed about it most, more than anything. When he got the ball out on that right-hand side, he looked to be positive and, and creative. Plenty more to come from Nikola Vlasic, I'm sure. Plenty more to come, maybe, from Umar Nias. Things haven't gone his way since he arrived at Everton Football Club, but he got a terrific reception himself on Wednesday night, and he topped it with his first goal for the football club. And wasn't he pleased to do so? It was a long way to get the one first, but it's just a goal for me. It's a goal in cup against Sunderland team in championship, so it's important to have it but the most more important I have to keep working and to look after the f for the Premier League's goals and coming from there we will see after but it's always good to have a goal and especially when you win the team win and because we needed that win to bring the confidence back. You've had to be patient but it, that goal has given you a, a good platform to build on now. Yeah we in life, everything can happen. That's all. That's that, that's what I'm saying always. Sometimes you think uh, everything go against you, but it's just the way that God choose, the way that God give it give to you. So you have to live with that and like being the nicest person you can be, like work hard, being a professional, and even if you're under 18, under 23, or with the first team. You have to work hard. That's what I think is the best way to do. There was a big smile on your face mm -hmm. when you scored. What was it like to score at the Gladys Street end as well and, and to celebrate in front of those supporters? It was something I was waiting for and I think also they were waiting for that, for me to give, give them a goal. And uh, like I said, it's a great feeling, like uh, very important for me. I know the confidence, it makes me feel more confident. It makes me feel my team make to feel conf more confident and also the fans are going to have more confidence about me and that's always good for the Everton for the team now and I think the best thing is to keep that like and work hard all together all the squad the players injured and all together to try to bring the team back because we can do it. I thought that was a lovely moment Graeme not only when Umar Nias came on and got a great reception but when he scored his goal and it was a good goal. It was a terrific goal. I mean, his first touch on the chest was great and the second touch, half volley straight in the top corner. It doesn't get any better than that and in front of the Gladys Street end as well. So, you know, it was great to see, great to see him. He's, he's had a difficult time since he's been at the football club, but that will certainly do his confidence the world of who have won it, Sharpie. Yeah, I was absolutely delighted for him. And I think you saw the reaction, not only from the crowd, but from his teammates as well, who all went over to him to a man. You know, that shows you, you know, what they think of him as well. You know, the situation he was in, he could easily have thrown the towel in. 
but he hasn't got his head down and, and battled well, waited for his chance. And as Diamond said there, it was a fantastic finish. Uh, so hopefully there's more to come as well. Can he be a part of the squad for the next three home games and really try and establish himself? Well, well listen, you know, everybody knows that the depth we've got of, of forwards, you know, and, and, and main strikers. So certainly can be in the squad. You know, obviously it's up to him now to push uh, and give the manager a problem. But for me, uh, if you've got a goal scorer in your ranks, you need to include him. Dave Runsworth has been delighted with his attitude for the under-23s, hasn't he, Graham? He has, yeah. And I mean, that speaks volumes for Umar. You know, he's got his head down, knuckled down. He got his reward on Wednesday night. Yeah, he certainly did. And that's just about it for part one of this week's show. Coming up in part two, we'll hear from Jordan Pickford and David Unsworth. Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Now, after an indifferent start to the Premier League two season, Everton under-23s are really up and running with three consecutive victories against Chelsea, Tottenham and most recently Derby County at Pride Park. They really are in top gear now, Sharpie. They are, and they, that's uh, three fantastic results. You know, uh, good sides as well. And, you know, Chelsea and Tottenham, you know, fantastic. Then you go to Derby and you think, you know, it might be a little bit easier. But, you know, Derby put out a really strong side and the boys get the results. So, Unzi will be absolutely delighted. Uh, and again, you know, it's the most important thing is that the, the lads progress. You know, and they're certainly doing that. You were at Goodison Park for the win against Tottenham. Good win, good performance. And again, some terrific goals. Yeah, some excellent goals. I mean, Adam Ola Lutman, you know, scored a terrific strike as well. I mean, it's great when you can get players of first team experience to play for your under twenty threes as well, and that helps the younger players come along as well. Um, so Sharpie's absolutely right. I mean, the, the the goal is to get the young players into the first team squad, but it's always nice to win games of football. So confidence boosting victories, a three nil away at Chelsea, and we know how tough Chelsea have been over the years. Four one against Tottenham. I'm guessing that the one that's probably delighted David Unsworth the most would probably be the battling performance to win 1-0 away at Derby. As Sharpie says, a really experienced Derby side, so they're in good nick. I spoke to Unzi after the Derby game and you're quite right, he was absolutely cock-a-hoop about them because they really dug in, they showed a real determination to keep the clean sheet and get the win. And it's a fairly new side for Unzi because he's got a lot of boys out on loan. Well, well it is, Dan. The, the thing that would please him most is the fact that you know they had six players with experienced players, first team experience. Uh, and that's great for the kids as well. We always talk about, you know, they're not getting comp uh, com competitive games. But when you're playing against six first teamers, that gives you yourself, you know, a, a challenge going, let's go and prove I'm good enough to mix it. So they've certainly done that. You can't be playing against somebody with a bit of know-how, can you? Yeah. And talk of under-23s leads us beautifully into our My First feature this week because we caught up with David Unsworth. <laughs> My first car was a Ford Fiesta 1.1. Um, it cost me two and a half thousand pounds, and I still remember the number plate, six, uh, C673ECK. My first boots were Admiral, I think, um, but then very, very quickly, I moved on to New Balance. My first club was uh, a team in just outside Chorley called Lastly Village. I didn't stay there very long, but then I went on to play for Eccleston Juniors um, and then Exton Villa, where I was spotted by a scout, an Everton scout, while I was playing for Exton Villa. My first memory was, was a game my dad took me to, uh, Man United versus Stoke. Uh, Man United won 1-0. Um, and I just remember walking up the stairs at Old Trafford and, and just it was like wow um, and that's really when I when I said to myself I wanted to be a professional footballer. I remember when I was young probably four or five I got a set of drums and they were class and um, just a brilliant set of drums and uh, drove my mum crazy with them um, yeah that's the first proper present I can remember. My professional debut um, was in 1992 against Tottenham. I was sub, sub at the time, where the, the time when there was only two players as subs, and I came off the last 10-15 ten, ten, minutes and managed to pop up with the equaliser. But uh, that was at White Hart Lane in Gary Lineker's um, last ever game for Tottenham. So we were three 0 down at half time, and we, we managed to come back and, and get a three three draw, which was uh, which was nice.
That was Unzi spilling the beans there, Sharpie, and he's really come on since you first met him. He has, I think, a uh, long, long time ago. Uh, too long to remember, but uh, he was an apprentice. You know, when we were at Belfield, I remember him uh, cleaning the boots and doing all the all the jobs apprentices did at the time. But would I have imagined he would be where he is? No, possibly not. You know, you don't know in football how your career is going to go, but certainly he's making a great go of what he's doing at this moment in time. I think, you know, all the lads who play under him talk so highly of him and he certainly he knows how to motivate a team. So, you know, fair play to him, but I can still picture him, you know, picking up all the, the, the dirty socks and the, <laughs> the slips and cleaning boots and all that. People like you threw on the floor, yeah? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was one of the younger members of the Everton side that you were in, the side that beat Wimbledon on that never-to-be-forgotten day and then won the FA Cup the year later. But he was always an old head on young shoulders, wasn't he? He was, yeah. He was always, like, he's a clever guy, an intelligent guy, David, as well. Um, really quick player, big lad, as we all know. But, uh, you know, with, with his nickname says it all, doesn't he, the rhino. But I'll tell you what, he could shift, Hunzi. And he was a real, real strong boy. Good player, good left foot. Could score a penalty as well, as we all know. And, you know, I'm like Sharpie. I wouldn't have been, you know surprised if he'd gone into coaching but you never know which way people people are going to go but again he's made a good fist of it he'd have been delighted with what the 23s did last season mm. and he'll, he'll aspire to be a, a premier league manager one day i'm sure people enjoy watching his teams don't they yeah they do i think they i think they mirror him you know the way he played as well he was a winner and he wanted to win every game and his, his attitude you know in every day in training and he'll push the, the, the young lads he was the exact same, you know, the lads who played with him and I, I remember him as a, a youngster all those years ago as well, so he, I'm not surprised. The under-23s play Arsenal, by the way, at Southport on Monday. Let's switch our attentions back to the first team. It's Bournemouth up next at Goodison Park in the Premier League. This is Jordan Pickford's take on this one. It's going to be a, a, a tough game, but it's a game that we, we, we can win and we go for a good game plan. and. If we get this win against Bournemouth, then it'll kickstart our season because it's been a tough start. But as a group of lads, we're a good group of lads and staff around us are all good. And we go there and next batch of games, we'll go and win as many as we can. There's one particular player at Bournemouth who you probably know better than the rest of them as well, yep. in Jermaine. How, does that help you? Do you know which way he's going to go? Does he know what you're going to do? How does it work? Not really, because he's a, that's what he's a, one of the top goal scorers in the league for. Uh, JD, he can, he can score from anywhere really he, and it doesn't have to be with power, he's got that position and timing of the ball but hopefully the lads in front of us will stop him from getting them shots but if called upon I'll be, be there to make the save. How do you feel it's going so far? Yeah, good, Everyone, I feel like everyone knows where we are, where we stand but results haven't went our way but we know what how good we can be and as a group of lads we, we know we're, we're only a little bit away from it, getting them results. Diamond Bournemouth will come to Everton with a little bit of confidence after winning their first Premier League game of the season last weekend. Jermaine Defoe is obviously the standout danger, but you like the look of his partner. Yeah, Josh King's a good player as well. I think, you know, little and large, isn't it? Josh King's a powerful figure. Again, like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, he stretches sides. And you know Jermaine Defoe is a major goal threat because his career tells you all you need to know about that. So we've got to be on our toes. We've got to, you know, be on our metal, start the game really, really well, defend first and foremost you know, competently, because if you give J Jermaine Defoe one chance, like he showed against Brighton last Friday night, he puts it in the back of the net. So I'm, I'm confident that we pick up three points, but we've got to do the fundamentals correctly. That was a big win for Bournemouth because Brighton and Hove Albion are just the sort of team they've got to beat if they want to prolong their stay in the Premier League. Well, they have done, and you know, it won't be easy for us. You know, they're a decent side, they're a good football side as well. Eddie Howe's got them playing football, so we need to be at our best obviously taking some confidence from the, the midweek game against uh, Sunderland into it, but we have got to be at our best to get a result. So whilst we talk about Bournemouth winning games, we need to start winning games and winning. We've got a, a good run of home fixtures coming up. Let's start with a win. The fans will be expecting Everton to win, won't they? Yeah, well, they will do it, and that's where the pressure comes from. You know, the manager's already stated that, you know, it's not, it's not been an ideal start to the season. This is where the pressure builds, and this is where the players have to come to the fore and get the three points. Patience, we seem to say this every week, don't we, Dan? But patience again may be a key word against Bournemouth. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, we don't want to go out gung-ho and leave ourselves, you know, exposed at the back. But that said, I'd still want us to be on the front foot from, from the first whistle, 
you know, get out there. We know, we say it all the time, we know what Goodison Park is like. If you show some desire, you get the ball out wide, you get some crosses in the box, some attempts on goal, they are with you and they'll back you all the way. You know, as soon as you start, you know, tippy-tapping around and, and not putting your foot in, all of a sudden it turns and, the, you know, the concerns can be heard from the crowd. So it's up to us to be positive, go out there and really give the fans something to shout about. Three home games, Sharpie, in the space of eight days. It's a real chance to very quickly get the momentum back. Well, it is, Dan, but I just think you've got to make sure you, you just take care of the first one. Of course, people will start thinking, yeah, after that, we'll have so many points, we'll be through with this, blah, blah, blah. You've got to concentrate on the first one, and that's Bournemouth. If you can get a, a result, and by that I mean a, a win, then the confidence starts to build. It's important the, comp the players' confidence gets built up again because after the start of the season, they're a little bit down and rightly so, as everybody is, the supporters as well. But we need to go on a little run now and it's important that we start it with Bournemouth on Saturday. Just very quickly, Chelsea away. Carabao Cup. Tough draw, really, really tough draw, Darren. There's no doubt about it. So, you know, we were really optimistic after after picking up a 3-0 win and then you sort of sink a little bit <laughs> when you, you realise you've got to go and play the, you know, the champion. So it's, it's, it's a tough one, but... We've seen what they do. They all, everybody mixes their sides up. We've got to go down there and give it our best shot. One to look forward to. And we're out of time, gentlemen. Thank you very much to Sharpie and to Diamond. And the very best of luck to Everton ladies as they kick off their WSL1 season later on tonight with the Merseyside Derby. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way you can catch every single future episode.